What's going on, Faithful? This is your boy Mike from the Nothing But Niners crew. We are back. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Our breaking news segment is over. We are going to take this thing to our Q&A now. The Ask Me Niners section is here. Before we start, I want to thank everybody who participated and sending in your questions. We're going to combine some of them. We're going to uh, tell you guys that we answered some of them in the previous breaking news video concerning the offensive line coach, things like that. So we're going to get this thing going here. We're going to answer three or four of these questions that we have here. Try to combine some of them and make sure that you guys are satisfied. We want to thank again for sending in those questions, guys. We really, really appreciate it. This is something I'm looking forward to doing a couple of times a week. So uh, as long as the crew was up for it. I'm ready to do it at all times. All right, guys. Now, I know that there's some fights coming on tonight that people want to see. So we're going to have to wrap this thing up so that way we don't piss off our viewers. The good thing is they can always come back and watch it again. Guys, make sure you check out the website. It's www.nothingbutniners.com. Check us out on all our social media platforms and make sure you check us out on the podcast tip as well. Anywhere that you listen to your podcast, we are there. You can search NB Niners, Nothing But Niners, 49ers, and we'll pop up on the list also. Okay. So, guys, give us a follow. Give us five-star reviews on the podcast. Thumbs up everywhere else, all right? We appreciate the, this good stuff. My men are here, man. Tony and Anthony. Anthony and Tony. Tony and Tony. I don't know what's going on over here, man, but I'm happy that you guys are here. I want to have some fun doing this, okay? So we're going to jump right back into it. I'm going to ask the question. I'll throw it to you guys. And if I disagree with anything that you guys said, I'll rebuttal at the end of it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys my thoughts on it, okay? Um, so... The first question we're going to combine with a different one, okay? Um, we did the breaking news video about losing our assistant offensive line coach. Um, so let's go ahead and start there. It says, with all the talk about our defense needing more help, are we satisfied with the offensive line? And if not, what's the biggest need on O-line? Um, and part B to that is, it's obvious that Weston Richburg is a really good center that played hurt much of the year. But like all centers in the NFL, he needs some help from his guards and pass protection. And he didn't really receive that from Person or Tomlinson. Do the 49ers upgrade a guard in free agency, or is the answer already inside the building? All right. Now, the question actually mentioned Garnett by name, but there's some other guys out there also, like Magnuson, to keep in mind. So, uh, Tony, we'll give it to you first, and then we'll give it to Anthony. And then, like I said, if I disagree with anything, I'll let you guys know. Break it down for us, man. First off, I love that Part B question. Uh, I agree 100%. I believe the guards do need to help out more with Weston Richburg. Um, <clears throat> as far as the offensive line in general, uh, I think we're, we solidified the right tackle spot in acquiring with the ninth pick, uh, McGlinchey last year from Notre Dame, um, played very well, made pro fo I think pro football fo focuses all rookie team. If I, if I'm not mistaken, um, we slide over to the right guard spot. We had, we added last year, um, I'm drawing a blank, Mike Person. Uh, an undrafted free agent who was with Kyle in Atlanta. Uh, so scheme familiar, familiar, familiarity, um, signed a one-year deal, veteran minimum, 975. Stop laughing, Mike. Um, uh, so I would like to re-sign him, bring him back. We also have Josh Garnett playing on the right side, who by, for just, just for just saying this out loud, that when he came into the game versus Minnesota, they ran the ball right down the field behind Josh Garnett. Um, when he came in at the latter part of the season, when person got banged up, he did pretty well. Um, problem is he's got to stay, um, injury free. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to stay off that, uh, IR, whatever designated return, whatever he was on, but he looked okay. Moving over to the center spot, Western Richburg battled knee injuries all year. I believe he missed two games. He's not a big center. He's a lighter center. He's got a mean streak to him that I, I love about him. So I was ecstatic when we signed him. Now let's move over to the left guard, and we have Tomlinson coming off an injury. To tell you the truth, I know Anthony has a different opinion on this because we spoke about this previously, but Tomlinson is coming off an MCL injury, which is 10 times better than an ACL injury. Um, I don't think he's getting surgery on it. I think it's going to be all rehab. Um so, I mean, I think he played solid. He had a couple blunders last year where he had missed assignments uh, and passed pro on a couple stunts. He looked a little lost. But, I mean, listen, we picked him up for, what, a fifth-round pick from Detroit. Mayhew saw something with him. We brought him in. He, he helped us out. He helped the offensive line out in the run game. His pass pro, just like Richburg, is a little shaky. So, on the left tackle spot, we have Staley. Do we need to start grooming somebody for the future? Yeah, maybe we should start thinking about that. Even though Staley has got like a, a kick in the butt with energy, 
because he's got like this renewed attitude. He he feels like he can play another four years, three, four years. He's happy. Think he's happy with the way they're going. Things are going in San Francisco, the locker room. So eventually we're going to have to look at a left tackle. Um, is it a high, high, high priority right now? No, because I think Staley's got a solid two years left in him. Um, my focal point would be the right guard spot. Um, I would re-sign Pearson, bring him back. We have Garnett. I would add somebody to the mix. I wouldn't spend big money on a free agent, and I wouldn't go with a high draft choice. Um, this could be a later round pick or an undrafted free agent even. Um, I'm not going to start naming prospects. We'll get into that down the road in our prospect show as the draft comes closer. But one thing I did notice, and I, I didn't like it. Well, it's not that I didn't like it. I think that Western Richburg needs help in the pass, bro. Meaning the two guards, when they set up in their pass sets, they need to punch their inside arm in to at least let Richburg recover from snapping to get his hands up. I mean, let's face it, guys. He's not a big guy. I said that. But it's very tough to snap a ball and anchor yourself for pass protection because it, in a matter of a second, they see your snap hand, they go after your snap shoulder. Now you got to snap that ball accurately between your legs and then get this hand back up to, to jab him. Now, obviously he struggled with that, but I'm, I mean, I'll take it back to days where it was Chris Dahlman with Ray Brown on the right side. And I think it was Kevin Gogan on the left side or vice versa. And those guys, he's the same type of center dominant to Richburg and they didn't have a problem. So we need these two right guard, the right guard and the left guards to step up, punch inside on pass sets. I'm sure Benton's going to work on something. Um, but the main focal point on addressing and upgrading the offensive line is going to be, I believe the right guard spot. All right, Anthony, man, Tony took it, took it all away, man, but He's got some things in there that I, I'll, I'll see if you get to him or not. And then if not, I'll, I'll jump <laughs> on you. So you go ahead, buddy. Yeah, uh, I think overall the offensive line's uh, performance run blocking was really good. Our offense in terms of running is a zone run scheme. And Shanahan got the most out of his average starting guards. Uh, Mike Person is a good backup. He is not a quality starter in my opinion. Uh, he's coming off – up to what 30 is already 30 now and that age kept catches up to o linemen really quick and it, there's only a handful of o linemen that, that are out there now that you know still perform at a good level at their age especially in their mid 30s um lakin tomlinson's knee injury kind of bothers me because i don't like injuries in o linemen it's something that could be nagging it's something that could be reoccurring and i loved lakin's play Tony hit it on the head when he said that his pa pass protection needs some work. His run blocking was really good. Uh, overall, I think next season he comes in as a starter, but I wouldn't be surprised if Shanahan and Lynch bring in some competition against him, especially against a uh, person too. Uh, when I was talking to Tony, I'm looking at it, and the free agent options for a guard are pretty thin. We could bring in Luke Jogel from Seattle, not a good option. We could bring in Matt Tobin, who was previously with us in the preseason, got cut. So they could bring in some familiar faces to challenge almost in person. But otherwise, if we don't trade for someone or if we don't draft someone high, it'll be addressed as a UDFA. It'll be addressed as a late round pick. But otherwise, that's it. Both guard spots do concern me because the pass protection needs to step up, especially with Garoppolo coming back. And I know it was a dumb ACL injury that he ran himself into, but I actually don't want to see Garoppolo get hit any harder than he should. and. Our O-line, especially the interior, needs to improve pass protecting-wise. Rickberg needs help. He can't do everything on his own. I like the idea of Garnett starting on the right side over Person. I know we didn't see much of him. I know he has a bad injury history, and a lot of people are tired of it, a la Jimmy Ward, but on offense. Garnett still has the ability to go in there and play. I know he played in the last game of the season, and if not a lot of people noticed it, he almost got into a little fight with Aaron Donald. You know why? Because he stopped Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald was getting a little pissy about it. And I like seeing that. I like seeing that from Josh Garnett, our first round guard. And he needs to step up. And I think he has that ability in him to step up and be a starter. He's still young. He still has a lot of potential. And I think Garnett is going to come in. He's going to fight for that starting spot. 
And I look at it like they gave Jimmy Ward a chance at safety until he got hurt. I think they're going to do the same with Garnett too. I think Garnett is going to get a spot, uh, get a start, get a chance also. So he can get a chance also to fight with person for that starting spot. And I honestly think he'll win it. And it's going to be a good competition overall. McGlinchey, fine. Clearly a cornerstone tackle that will be on this team for years to come. Bailey has two more good years left or so. Uh, that's a little concerning to me. I think this offensive line honestly overachieved. The offensive line overachieved a lot this season. And I love seeing that. But to do it on a consistent basis next season with who's coming back and who's going to be coming in, it's, it's going to be crazy. Will the run game be great? Absolutely. But do I still think the O-line overachieved? Absolutely. Every O-line, every O-lineman changes as they get a year older, and we see it. And going back to Staley, like Tony said, he has this renewed energy and this renewed confidence to go out there and just grind against the best edges. But that can only last for so long. And I love Staley to death. He's my guy. But – at some point, you got to think, man, the replacement's going to have to come soon. And we'll hit that in the prospect show when it comes. But, man, the age and the ability to perform with this O-line is going to be in the spotlight come next season. And there's going to be a lot of change with the coaching staff, with the guard spots. It's, it's going to be huge. So am I satisfied? For now. But will I be satisfied once preseason comes? We're going to have to see because it's going to be one hell of a competition. Good job, gentlemen. You guys are killing this answer, man. I, I love everything you guys are doing. The breakdowns are thorough. They're efficient. And I'm going to come in here and blow it all up. I'm going to come in here with all my bias. I'm not going to hold any punches back. I'm going to tell you guys exactly how I feel. Number one, I did not like the Tomlinson edition when we first made it happen. I didn't like that we picked him up for familiarity reasons. Martin Mayhew knew who he was and things like that. I hated it. Tomlinson did surprise me this year with his durability and his play. It really, really sucked to see him go down like that the last game of the year or the game before. I think it was week 17, right? It's the end of the end of the year. I mean, that's that's a horrible, horrible way to he was playing every single snap up before that. So that was that was pretty impressive. Um, he could definitely get better, though. Um, this injury, like uh, like Anthony and Tony both said, won't require any surgery. But it is a little concerning to me. I kind of prefer them to go in and do some minor cleanup and, you know, tighten some things up and make sure he's going to be okay. Um, from a, a big guy who's had a, a left knee injury uh, with torn ligaments and all, I never went and had my surgeries done. And I can tell you guys that if I'm out and I'm doing the game of pickup for too long, after I start jumping around a little bit too much, I can feel things popping out of place again and all. And I know I got to slow it down. Now, I am not saying I'm an NFL shape or anything like that. I'm just saying that when you let things heal naturally, that you can start to, you know, the, the wear and tear starts to catch up with you after a while. Uh, if you don't have the proper corrective surgeries, it might not be necessary, but it doesn't mean it could hurt. I don't know. I'm not an expert on all that. Tomlinson, eh, that's just how I feel about Tomlinson, okay? As far as person goes, Mike Person earned a lot of respect from him. He is one tough SOB. That guy fought through so many injuries all season long. He did not want to relinquish any snaps to Joshua Garnett at all. Like he would, he ref, you would have going to have to literally take him out on a stretcher to get Joshua Garnett in the lineup. And that's what ended up happening. Um, you know, it was all about him being hurt. And then that's how Joshua Garnett get him, got in there. And you can see why person didn't want him in there because Garnett is nasty. He's, he's, he's an attacker in the run game. And even in the pass game, if he steps back and no one's in front of him, his head's on a swivel. He's looking for someone to make contact with and block. You didn't see that kind of hunger with Tomlinson all the time. You didn't see it all the time with Person either. Those guys were, this is my assignment and nobody's here. All right, what can I do? And they're turning around. They're picking their quarterback up off the ground. I want someone who's going to be looking to make contact if you're an offensive lineman. So Garnett is my favorite guy. I am so happy. One, I think I was talking to Tony about this. And I was like, wait, you mean to tell me that he's got another year? I thought that it was last year was his last year. I was getting all sad. I was like, man, they're not going to bring him back. Luckily, my guy's got one more year in the contract. I am excited about that. And then there's a fifth year option if he ends up panning out. So I'm really, really excited about Joshua Garnett next year. Um, he, he looked good from the very, very limited snaps that we saw. That goes from preseason to regular season. Uh, and then when it comes to rest, Weston Richburg, I know we were talking about him specifically. I think we all agree across the board that he does need help from the guard position in pass pro. 
Um, but Reston Richburg was very, in my opinion, overrated. In my opinion, he is he's got the best attitude on the team as far as offensive linemen goes. I want that that attack like nasty guy in the trenches, like he's going to be doing some extra pushing and pulling and he's going to play all the way through the whistle. He's got that in him, but you have to be good at your craft. And I'm just not sure that Weston Richburg was, I don't know if, if it's me judging the contract that he got or if it's just me looking at his overall play. But what I keep telling myself is, man, I'm not sure if Weston Richburg is worth it. And worth is obviously going to be something that is judged based off of, a couple of different things, pay and things like that. So um, I I don't know how to fairly judge it or critique it, but Weston Richburg, he's got to get better also. Uh, so I'm excited to see another year in the system with him. Hopefully he can take a major step forward. Hopefully this offensive, um, the the assistant offensive line coach can, whoever we bring in, can bring something new to him and, and get him uh, going. So um, as far as free agents go, I know you guys didn't touch on it, but there are two in particular that I wanted to uh, tell you guys about really, really quick. One of them is from Buffalo, the 28-year-old guard, Ryan Groy. All right. Uh, he's one of them. And then the other one is 27-year-old Chance Warmack. If these guys are healthy and they can come in, uh, I would like the Niners to take some flyers on these young guys uh, just to see what they can do. Uh, again, health is going to be a big concern, um, but if they can do it, I would like to see it. That's all I'm saying. I, I want to see these guys come in and and compete for some for some positions if possible. Uh, and again, I'm looking this up on Spot Rack. So if they're not really free agents, uh, then you guys can take it up with Spot Rack. But I'm pretty sure 2019 Chance Warmack is going to be a free agent, as well as my guy that I was talking about, Ryan Droy from Buffalo, 28 year old guard. Um, I would, I just want to see some competition. I want to see someone young. Uh, one of the things that I that is my pet peeve is like bringing in these really old vets. Uh, Anthony alluded to that also. You don't want to bring in, you know, a Mikey Potty who's 32 and been battling injuries for the last three or four years. You just don't want to see that. You want to bring in someone with some consistency, someone with some youth, and if you like what you see, you can extend them. All right, guys, we all good on that question? Yeah? All right. Let's go ahead and, and take it to the next one now. Okay. So the next question that we have here is, why hasn't Robbie Gold been re-signed? What's going on with Robbie Gold? The question asked about his wife and his family who are still in Chicago. We learned that in the Chicago playoff game with Robbie's tweets and things like that. Uh, they're still out there, man. Uh, Tony, what's, what's the deal, man? Why isn't Robbie Gold back yet? Is he coming back, guys? I um I read something that Robbie uh, I think it was on 49ers.com that Robbie wants to come back. His his two years in San Francisco was probably his best two years of his career as far as locker room wise. Um I guess the way they treat their players in San Francisco, he was satisfied with that. I mean, I think the team does want to bring Robbie Gold back. I don't know why they would not. But I mean, I mean, let's face it. They know where he's from. Um, if the family wants to remain there and he, he asked the team, listen, can I, I just want to go back to Chicago. It's better for me and my family. Shit. I'd franchise tag him and get something in return for him. But overall, I think Robbie gold will be in San Francisco next year kicking. I could probably see them give him like a nice two year deal. I know he signed for two years for 5 million. I think they'll give him a little bump in pay. Um, it's tough though, Mike, when you deal with families and you've got like your family in Chicago, they're pulling you. Well, let's go back here. Let's. Go. It's a tough situation, but I I think Robbie feels something special in San Francisco, and I think he's going to remain there. Hopefully, they'll do a little more than two years. Maybe they might give him a three year. I don't know how old is Robbie Golden. Is he like thirty five? I mean, I, I kickers should go. How old? Thirty six. So I screw it. You give him a how, Phil Dawson's kicking at 40. You give him a three year contract. He kicks to 39. And, you know, the family, maybe they relocate. They come out to San Francisco till he's done. He retires. They go back to Chicago. But good field goal, good, reliable, accurate, trustworthy field goals are very hard to find. So when you got one, lock them up. All right. Anthony, man, what are your thoughts on the return of Robbie Gold? Uh, I'm looking at this interview he did, and he is quoted as saying, Chicago will always be home to me. And that could be taken a long way, but I think that shows a lot about how much he cares about Chicago. And oh, look what Cody Parkey did for the Bears. He just blew the whole playoffs for them. 
And Rob, if Robbie Gold really cares about Chicago, even though they kind of did him dirty, I think his gut would tell him to want to go back home and want to go back for the team that he's played with for so long. And I think he could do it. And I was looking at the free agent options, and they're not pretty. The best three I could come up with are Blair Walsh, who blew it, Patrick Murray, who got cut, and Nick Rose, who was on the Niners for a short minute, uh, who's more or less a place kicker. Overall, the free agency options are thin. There's no way in hell we draft a kicker. We better not. I don't, I, I don't know if I'll trust Lynch anymore if we draft a kicker. We'll probably bring in some UDFA options if Gold doesn't want to come back. But in my opinion, it's, it's kind of tearing between do you want to kind of open the checkbook for a 36-year-old kicker when you see guys like Phil Dawson and Adam Vinatieri get it done, even though Vinatieri, Vinatieri kind of blew it for the Colts in the playoffs too. And these old kickers, they always worry me because you never know when that drop-off hits. And the drop-off will hit them fast, and you don't know when it could be. But there's that other part of me that says, man, he was quality for the Niners the past two years. He's Mr. Consistency, Mr. Gold. You kind of want to open the checkbook for a guy like that who will bring you success and who has proven to be consistent at his eight. So overall, I think the Niners absolutely should bring him back considering the options are really thin. There's no way you trade for a kicker. There's no way you draft a kicker. You don't do any of those things. And if I'm Lynch and Shanahan, I'm saying, hey, look, look where we're trending. We're trending upwards. And I understand Chicago's there. I understand Chicago's home. But look what you have going on in San Francisco. We got Garoppolo. We got Pettis. We got Brita. We have all the young guys who are ready to make that next step into the playoffs and into success. And hopefully that pitch will be good enough to keep gold here. And I think they should absolutely give him give a two-year. Give him a three-year. It's okay. I mean, I don't really trust old kickers that much. But if Matt Bryant and Phil Dawson and Vinatieri can get it done, gold can too, no doubt. Excellent, excellent points, fellas. Um, I, I, you know, I, you guys know that I'm like, oh, I'm anti old guy in the locker room, but kicker isn't one of those positions, right? You can either still do it or you can't. Uh, we saw Phil Dawson fall off a cliff here in San Francisco, and we had to move on after him having a record setting season following behind Joe Nedney. We saw what happened there. Uh, we see Robbie Gold come in, and he's had two really, really good seasons here with us. Uh, you mentioned Cody Parkey and I just want to say in defense of that young man, that kick was blocked. That was not his fault. That was tipped. All right. So the Bears owe him a lot of money still. OK, I don't think the Bears are going to just be so quick to just let him go. That tip was that, that luckily for him, that was a block kick. And I think the Bears, if they were going to let him go, they would have done it already. He's still there. He's still in the contract. But, Anthony, you were mentioning some old heads, some names out there. And I don't know if you know this or not, but a lot of those guys are actually available. Steven Gostowski, um, Adam Vinatieri, Phil Dawson, Tabacha Janikowski, Dan Bailey, um, Cairo Santos. He's available also. Kai Forbath. Uh, these are some names. Josh Lambeau. These are some names that you guys have probably heard. If you play fantasy football and you're picking up guys, like he said, Nick Rose is available also. All of these guys are projected to be uh, free agents. The oldest one on this list is Adam Vinatieri. All right. I don't want him. Sebastian Janikowski. I don't want him. We have enough problems with people drinking here in Fort in San Francisco. Um, Robbie Gold, I wouldn't mind. Terry, Mike. Huh? How old is Vinatieri? Forty-six. All right, so there's a ten-year swing, and, and this probably was his worst season, right? Because probably Gold, yeah. Gold's thirty-six, and Vinatieri's forty-six. So I mean, listen, two, three years, I I would do it. I, I mean. I mean, look, here, here's the thing, right? So I'm looking at this site, and it has all the field goal percentages sorted. Robbie Gold was an amazing 97.1%, okay? 97.1%. The worst that I see on here is Phil Dawson. He was 62.5%. Adam Vinatieri was 85.2%. Steven Gostowski, uh, who is still currently kicking with the Patriots, at 84.4%. Uh, Sebastian Janikowski was at 81%. Dan Bailey was 75% so on and so forth. I mean, if we're looking at the pool of free agents based off of what they did last year for anybody who attempted more than 20 kicks, Robbie Gold is the guy. He's absolutely the guy. You guys want my honest opinion about it is this. I think we should try to do something that teams used to do back in the day where your backup quarterback is the holder and you have one kicker that does punts, kickoffs, 
and extra points and field goals. And I'm telling you guys, I have seen the highlight videos on YouTube. You're not going to believe me when I say it, but our punter, Bradley Pinion, is a really good field goal kicker also. He really, really is. Um, I, I might try to find the YouTube video link and put it in the description of this video if anybody's interested in seeing it. I wouldn't mind the Niners giving him a shot to see. Now, he's also a free agent, so I don't even know if they're going to bring him back. I, I don't know. But it's someone that I would like to see the 49ers bring back out here and give him a shot at doing both. I mean, imagine the roster spot that you can save. You know, this is not one of the questions, but people are saying, is is uh, Kyle Shanahan going to keep three quarterbacks this year? Well, if that's the case, we got to lose someone else, right? Well, how about we lose a kicker and a, and a punter and we combine the two in one that makes up for the roster spot that you need to see? Huh? Lynch, I'm always thinking about the team, man. I got you guys' best interest in art. But yeah, no, all, all jokes aside, though, man, I, I don't really care one way or the other. If I'm Robbie Gold and I'm coming off of my best two seasons statistically, 97% uh, kicking this year, and one of them was like a bad snap or something like that, it wasn't even his fault, I'm, I might want to test the free agent market. I might want to see if someone wants to give me $4 million a year as a kicker. You know what I mean? So I, I might want to test the free agent market to see what happens. He owes it to himself, and he owes it to to uh, his family to do that as well. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's get let's let's move on to the next question. We're going to wrap this thing up soon. Um, let's see here. Let's do this one, all right? It says, is Sherman going to get better next year in speed? Because it was, it'll be more than a year or a year and a half since his Achilles surgery. Or will he be even slower next season because of the surgeries in his age? Experience and knowledge can make up somewhat for speed being gone, but for how long? At some point, guys, age has to catch up to every player in the NFL. What are your guys' thoughts on Richard Sherman? Let's do this one backwards. Let's go to uh, Anthony, and then we'll go to Tony. Let's let's do this one backwards, mix it up a little bit. Oh, my God. I mean, age in cornerbacks really scares me. I mean, hell, if Terrence Newman can do it, and he did it until he's like 37, then maybe Sherman can do it, but he wasn't coming off a major injury. Um, I think Sherm will be better. I think he'll be okay. I think he's smart enough to adapt to his limitations. I think this is the time for him to understand that maybe I can't perform at the level I used to. Let me find ways to bet, make better adjustments. And we've seen Croc break this down, but Sherman does this weird hip head turn where he loses his receiver immediately and gets toasted. And I hope he catches on to that. And I think he will. I think Bringing in Joe Woods is going to have a huge impact on Sherm also. I think Woods has proven that if he can work with guys like Chris Harris and Akeem Tlaib, he can work with guys like Sherman. Sherman is a big personality. We understand that. But I doubt in any way Sherman would turn his back on coaches. He knows better. He trusts his Niners staff. He trusts his team. And he's going to trust Woods. And uh, overall, I think the Achilles thing, I think he'll grow on it. I think he'll get better from it. But if if it shows that it's not – He's still down. He's going to get targeted a lot more, and it's going to be an issue, especially if Akello steps up, especially if Tavarius Moore st steps up. Sherman could lose that CB1 spot really quick, and it could happen fast, especially with major injuries like that. So the drop-off might not be immediate, but midway through next season, if it shows that he's lingering, that injury is lingering, and he's slowing down, it, it's going to hit him, and it's going to hit him fast. And then it's going to fall on Lynch and say, oh, man, why did we bring in Sherman? But I think he'll be okay. I think that the only thing that will change about him is his speed. Because, again, it's an Achilles injury. It's not something easy to come back from. And he's going to get tested. He's going to get tested physically, and he's going to get tested mentally out there. We all say he's still Sherman. Sherman is Sherman. But he wasn't targeted as much because the guy across from him was playing so bad. And if Joe Woods can get the most out of Akello and get the most out of Moore, then so be it. Then we'll really see how Sherman is. And that's the part of me that's concerning is that was Sherman overrated also? Sherman could have been overrated just as much as some of the other guys on this team. And that's really concerning. But overall, he has, I think, two more good years left. He has two more years to show that he is a quality starter. He is a quality player, especially if those two years come fast or the injury hits him faster and he gets moved to safety or he just gets moved from the team. You never know what could happen. Shanahan and Lynch don't seem to be afraid to move on from guys, but they also seem to be patient with guys too. And with a guy of Sherman's caliber, the patience could be there with him. But if that Achilles is really nagging and we have young guys who are ready to come up and show that they can be starters too, 
you only want veterans playing for so long and Sherman's spot could be up for grabs really quick, especially if it's all bad. All right. Well said, Tony, man, your thoughts on Richard Sherman. Will he come back faster? Will he come back slower? Uh, regardless of those two, do you think age will start to catch up with him this year? I think, but I, let's keep it real. Um, Richard Sherman coming out of Stanford was not known for his speed. He was never a fast cornerback. Um, the Achilles, the Achilles tendon injury did slow him down. But on the other hand, I think this season he's going to stay at where he's at, maybe get just a tad bit faster because it's a mental game. He completed one season. His Achilles held up. I honestly think he might his agility might be a little bit better than his speed coming back for 2019. And um, let's, let's face it, man, he's a student of the game. His IQ is he's a top five cornerback IQ wise, the mental side of football. Does he need to, you know, adjust a couple of techniques he's doing? Does he need to um, like go back and look, okay, listen, this is what I did wrong. I turned my head here. I shouldn't have done that. I should read this key on that. But I mean, listen, the way this season went, I honestly, before we beat Seattle, I was kind of nervous about what direction Sherman was going to go. But when we beat Seattle, when I saw that video of him in the locker room with the team, the team backed him that day, played their ass off for him, and got that W, which was huge for him. And I kind of think that lit a fire under his ass a little bit to motivate him. Now, he's going to have to work his butt off this offseason to try to get himself back to where he was. But as far as, like, IQ the game, there's no age number that where that deteriorates his IQ. You, if, you, if you have an excellent IQ in the game, that's not going nowhere. So I think that's going to help him. I mean, listen, he wasn't a speed demon coming out, but I think he's going to be just enough just to get that done until the next player steps into the cornerback uh, CB1 position. I think he will be here for me. I know definitely he'll be here next year. And I think he'll be here the year after that if no one steps up in 19. Um, I think he's an asset for this team. I think he's an asset for that defense. He puts a swag to that defense that we need. Because without Sherman, there's no swag on that defense. It's a very calm – I mean, there, there's no chip on their shoulder. They play hard. They play tough. But Sherman adds that swag to this defense. And I'm really looking forward to 19 to see how it works. Now, my only thing is if we switch to a cover two, does that change Sherman's style of play? That's the only thing I, I'm kind of considering because now instead of a single high safety, you have two deep. So, I mean, I would love to talk to Croc about that eventually, but that's the only thing I'm concerned about. Or those are my concerns on that question. It's a good question, though, whoever sent that one in. Yeah, it was. It's a real. It's a really good question. You know, I'll try to be short and sweet here. It's our last question of the night, anyway. So uh, I do want to say this though. I do think that uh, Tony, you were absolutely right. Richard Sherman was never known for a speed guy. Um, that's I think part of the reason why he transitioned from wide receiver to DB in college is because of the lack of speed. But doesn't mean that you can't get slower. The little bit of speed that you did have, you can still lose that. Um, however, I think that this year. Richard Sherman will be faster than he was the beginning of this past season. Um, the, the injury was definitely hampering him. You heard him talk about, I think it was week 15 or 16 uh, following the Seattle game where he said that, you know, he feels a lot better. He's playing better. Um, they were talking about the vertical jump test that they do and how he didn't even, uh, you know, rank like he, he wasn't any good. And then he ended up out jumping everybody else in the, in the on the team on the entire team so he's obviously getting the explosion back which could be even quickness and things like that his ability to adapt and turn um but he's got to get smarter what i do like about uh richard sherman this year is that we have joe woods in here someone who was going to challenge richard sherman uh physically and probably mentally as well you know so i'm excited about that i do think richard sherman comes back this year i think richard sherman has a better year i for one thinks that he had an okay year um, but I don't think that Richard Sherman played as well as other fans think they, that he did. Um, I think this year, Richard Sherman is capable of having the year that fans thought he had this year. I think that physically he'll be back to that standard. Um, but I still think that someone could come in and challenge him for a spot. Um, 
But yeah, so that's really going to do it. Uh, Tony, if you step back again, you guys can see Tony and I are rocking the Birth of a Dynasty shirts. Uh, well, they're they're actually hoodies. Uh, Tony's got the black one on. I got the white one on. There's Tony's right there. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And I got the white one on here. I cut the sleeves off of mine. I took it to uh, my lady and she she hemmed it up and everything for me on the sleeves of it. But if you guys are interested in this, um, you guys can definitely hit up Nick. Uh, Nick at nothingbutniners.com is the email. Let them know what you're interested in getting. They do T-shirts. They do regular uh, long sleeve T-shirts. They do hoodies. They do uh, dry fit shirts and all that kind of stuff. We also have another one. Um, that you guys, I don't have one here to show, uh, but it's got like a, the 49ers player with the smoke coming out of the eyes and homage of Stone Cold and everything and the Stone Cold Kittle and all that stuff. You guys can check that out. You can order all of that stuff from Nick. All right, Nick at nothingbutniners.com. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You don't have to capitalize the end. He'll get the email, okay, guys? Uh, Anthony, is there anything else that you want to touch on before we get out of here, man? I think this is a pretty successful uh, first mailbag here that we did. Yeah, guys, send them those questions, definitely. Send them in to Mike, send them in to Nick, send them in to me on Twitter, any of the MB9 guys. We're always taking questions. We always want to cater to you guys. We always want to answer your guys' questions, and we're here for you. We're here to talk Niners with you guys. We're here to give you guys all the content we can, and we're busting our butts every day to give you guys the best. One closing comment I want to say is, although Sherman didn't have that major highlight everyone was looking for, I think one thing to take away is that the speed might sap, but his biggest highlight of the season was week three against the Chiefs when he somehow caught up to Tyreek Kill, even though the ball was overthrown or underthrown, excuse me, he caught up to him and still broke that ball up. I couldn't believe Sherman came out of nowhere and caught up to Ty Hill of all people and broke it up. So there weren't too many highlights to watch of him, but that was the biggest one that gives me that glimmer of hope that says, hey, that was week three. He was still recovering from that Achilles and he still is. He had minor surgeries. He's probably going to have minor surgeries to tweak whatever it is to help him get better. And I think he'll get back there physically. Maybe the speed will be iffy, but IQ doesn't change on the field. And Sherman is by far the smartest cornerback in football. And if anyone's going to adapt to any changes, like Tony said, whether we move to a cover two, whether we move to more man, whether we stick with cover three, whatever it is, Sherman's going to adapt to it. And he has a lot to prove it. And he's going to prove it, no doubt. Absolutely, man. You know, I remember that play and I was like, oh, my God. I remember watching the play as it was happening and Sherman looked like he was five yards behind him. And I was like, oh, my God, here's a big play. It's going to be a touchdown. And like, boom, he was just he was there. I was like, holy smokes. Like, yes. I got up like, let's go. Shit. That was the first time I like stood up and like cheered for him actively and anxiously. So you're absolutely right. Um, I'm trying to think. Let me see. I know that someone in here said something in, in the chat. I just opened it up and glanced at it. Someone said, let the fans interact. We are going to do a show for the fans. All right, guys, uh, we have a hotline that you guys can call in. And if you want to leave voicemails that we can play on the air, we're going to react. If you guys want to ask questions that way for the next mailbag, the phone number is 628-888-3434-4343. Shit. You guys are going to end up calling somebody that I'm giving you the wrong number to. Um, 628-888-3434. I'm pretty sure that's the number. All right. So you guys can you guys can send messages there. You can text. You can call that number, leave voicemails. We don't answer it, but you guys can call, leave voicemails. Every once in a while, we'll do a show with that phone line actually active and fans can call in. Uh, but we do have shows planned for this offseason where people, the supporters of our show, fans of the 49ers can call in and we're going to get busy with you guys. This show is for the people. Uh, we, we're all fans ourselves. We're just really, really passionate about it. Um, but anything else, Tony, man, is there anything else you want to touch on? Just keep fast sending questions, man. Send the questions. And when we get this phone call in up and running, I'm really looking forward to speaking to you guys on on air questions live. Um, I'm NJ Niner four nine nine. Um hit me up. Send me a direct message, send me a tweet, whatever you want. I'll answer it. If I don't answer it, it'll be on the next show that we do. Um Yeah, I mean that's it. I, I loved answering the questions today. All the fans that questions that we answered, they were all excellent questions. Um, and just just keep them coming. As we get closer, as we get closer to um, you know free agency and then the draft, and uh, you know we're going to be talking more in in deep about those topics. It's just going to be great. Go ahead, Mike. You got something? 
Yeah, I found the number, guys. Don't call that number that I said earlier. That was the wrong number. Whoever's phone number that is, I apologize. I just put the number in the live chat, guys. So if you guys can't see it, uh, it's there. It's 628-888-3443. That's the number right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. My phone should be in focus now. That is the uh, nothing but Niners phone number. Area code 628-888-3443. I had the numbers right, man, but my dyslexia got the best of me, I guess. I was all over the place with those threes and fours. But all right, guys, that's going to be it. We want to thank you guys for checking this out, man. I can't wait to do another one of these. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Prepare for glory. Anticipate pain. But always remain faithful. We're out. Peace.